There is no Muslim ban. If there was, oh, a f off. Sorry, why don't we f off? Oh, okay. This is the point. The Muslim this is a talk about the hysteria. I'm talking about 85% of the world's Muslims are allowed into the country. This is what, you do, this this is what you do, Pish. You say uh, he hasn't done this, he hasn't done that, he's not going to do all these things. Give him a f chance, mate. And you know what I mean? Why not? Hitler he's didn't doing. kill the Jews on the first day. He worked up to it. <laughs> mate. Well, that was Piers Morgan debating President Trump's travel ban with Jim Jeffries, a comedian. From Australia. It was all on real time with Bill Maher on HBO. But Piers was hardly done. After that, he got into a lengthy Twitter spat with Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling. Rowling tweeted this The fact free, amoral, bigotry apologism of celebrity toady Piers Morgan is, of course, why it's so delicious to see him told to F off. Piers replied this way by calling Rowling's tweet, quote, peak foul mouthed minor celebrity anti Trump hysteria at its most deliciously supercilious. Rowling retorted this way If you'd only read Harry Potter, you'd know the downside of sucking up to the biggest bully in the school is getting burned alive, and so on, for dozens of tweets. But when he isn't battling beloved children's authors on the Internet, Piers Morgan is the U.S. editor-at-large for DailyMail.com. He joins us now from Tampa. Pierce, that was, when, <laughs> when citizens of the British Commonwealth go to war with each other, the results are, are unbelievable. So what was the argument Jim Jeffries was making? F off. What does that mean exactly? Well, look, I, it wasn't an argument, was it? He was just, he was just shutting me down by telling me to go forth and multiply. I mean, what was extraordinary was we just had a lengthy segment in the show, in Bill Maher's show, about the need for President Trump to be more factual, to always tell the truth, not to be erroneous right. with his facts and so on. And then we moved on to, I think Bill mentioned it first, the Muslim ban. And I said, well, hang on, it's not actually a Muslim ban. Now, I read a column for the Daily Mail when this executive order came out saying I didn't agree with it, I didn't think it was well executed, I thought it was wrong. However, you cannot call something a Muslim ban if 85% of the world's Muslims are allowed into America, even if it comes into effect. So it was just a factual statement. Uh, and it seemed to me very important to make that point and make it strongly, given we just had a big debate about facts. Um, anyway, Jim Jeffries didn't like this, and off he went, you know, effing and blinding and trying to shut me down. He didn't really have any argument to put to me. Uh, and then he used the Hitler analogy, and, you know, Hitler started, you know, didn't kill the Jews all on day one. I mean, to me, I'm sorry, but I just find this Hitler stuff with Donald Trump unbelievably offensive for two reasons. One, you know, Adolf Hitler killed 12 million people, including his systematic extermination of 6 million Jews in the Holocaust. This is not something we should be trivially throwing around about other people unless they have done similar acts. Donald Trump, to my knowledge, has not murdered anybody. All right? So this, this analogy of him being the new Hitler I find incredibly offensive. I also think it diminishes the scale and importance and horror of what Hitler did. So I think that should just be shut down. But, of course, you try and say this, and if you're not prepared now in the liberal world to say that he's the new Hitler, and you're not prepared to say every Muslim is banned from the country, you yourself then become the devil. And that's what happened to me. Right, you're, compli you're complicit in these crimes. So to, to J.K. Rowling, I'm interested, I want the overview here for a sec. Like a lot of people, especially of her station, affluent, well-known celebrities, she's really upset, like more upset than I've ever seen a class of people ever be upset. What is that about? Why are people you'd think would be in a pretty good mood because they're insulated from every economic variation you can imagine? Why are they so mad right now? Well, she's a serial loser. I mean, <laughs> the more that J.K. Rowling has screamed at people to vote in a certain way, the more her people have lost. So let's go through the checklist of glorious failure. She backed Ed Miliband in the last UK election. He got thumped by David Cameron. Uh, she then moved on to back the Remain campaign to stay in Europe. And obviously we Brexited, so she lost that as well. She then threw her substantial political influence behind Hillary Clinton, uh, a shouting down anybody that disagreed with her. And of course, Hillary got a drubbing as well from a guy who uh, was a non-politician. So if you're J.K. Rowling, you're three for three. You are the worst celebrity political pundit on the entire planet. So look, I, I understand her pain. Um, but she is, I think, Tucker, synonymous with this sort of uh, absurdly arrogant supercilious kind of view of so many celebrities now on the left 
And I'm, you know, as you know, I'm more liberal than I am right, but I cannot stand this anti-Trump hysteria which is now infesting every part of the political debate. Donald Trump's been president for less than one month. He has not been remotely monstrous, not by any standards of a dictator. Let's all just take a, as I said on Mar, a gigantic chill pill, and let's just see how he plays out. I happen to be quite encouraged uh, as somebody who probably wouldn't naturally have voted for Donald Trump myself, but I've watched his interaction with Japan and with China and with Canada today, right. with my own country, the UK. He looks to me to be somebody easing into the position of president and actually being quite pragmatic and pretty sensible. So why don't we all just stop marching every time he tweets, stop screaming every time he says anything, and just calm down? I think that's great advice. Or if you're J.K. Rowling, just go to your wine cellar for a month or two. <laughs> calm down. Just Here's go Morgan. and write about Hogwarts, wizards, whatever they are. I've never read a word of Harry Potter. <laughs> just go and immerse yourself in the world of muggles or whatever they are and shut up. Because, <laughs> you know, if, if a celebrity wants to talk about a cause, say you're Leo DiCaprio and you want to talk about yeah. climate change in a sensible, intelligent way, you know, that's great. DiCaprio, after Trump won, the first thing he did, he went with Al Gore to see the new right. president to talk to him about climate change. That is a smart way for a celebrity to use his status. But to be somebody famous and just assume your view somehow is more important no, than everybody else's. In, and if somebody doesn't agree with that view, you must scream them down like they're the <laughs> devil. Very I think evil. it's pathetic. <laughs> I love when Brits fight. Piers Morgan, thank you for that.